It's finally the time of the day. Time to get you guys in the know with the latest science and technology. Only on your number one channel, SABC1. Zanti for show. I know you love to know how to land on the moon, up in space, to land on the moon, see the Earth from far, far away. Well, Kacha we are going to be exploring one of the most amazing astronomical events, Ebitwang and Equinox. You might be wondering, what on Earth is an equinox? Good, because that's exactly what we'll be finding out in today's episode. So, I'm going to get into the science behind the cool celestial event that makes your day and night the same length and is Vagashele one of the most incredible places where you can see exactly what's going on in the sky above. For the culture this event signifies the start of autumn or spring and they celebrate it with all kinds of interesting festivals. We'll be getting a chance to have a look into these as well as find out how the equinox has helped to shape our calendar. Ready to take off? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Because I'm ready. Let's see you to see Patelani on today's show. Visit an amazing place that shows you what's up in the sky above. Learn more about the significance of the equinox of four different cultures. Turn back the clock to see how the equinox has helped us to determine time. Celebrate one of Mzanti's top astrophysicists or discover some cool applications to put a celestial realm at your fingertips. We to know more about the journey of becoming a space explorer, how to find some advice from Bachaki Baruna Bagacheko. I bet there are many of you out there who know exactly what Equinox is, but does the rest of Zanti know? We went to find out. Check this out. A planetarium is where we view stars, and, um, the planets, with the solar system, the Milky Way. Yes. Planets around. Us. It's got something to do with planets. It's just the something with, to do with the. Uh, I think it's the the that that the. Um. Okay. I know that an equinox is something. It doesn't. It isn't it when the sun and the moon are like equal to each other or something like that. Equinox is when both the night, the day, and the night are equal. Equinox chain, I have no idea. Like, you know, there's summer, summer solstice and there's equinox. It's, uh, there's, we have, uh, we have a summer solstice, then we have a winter solstice. The equinox represents, uh, I guess the summer, this autumn, it, represents, it may represent autumn, it may represent also spring, I think. The equinoxes, lady solstices, are responsible for the different seasons that are on planet Earth. In Pano, what are they and how do they work? The Earth turns on its own axis as well as revolves around the Sun. The Earth's axis of rotation is tilted at an angle of around 23 degrees. One revolution lost in one year, different parts of the Earth will have different exposure to the Sun's energy. When one of the Earth's poles tips towards the Sun and receives the most solar energy, it experiences summer. The same tip will be pointed away from the Sun, resulting in winter. These times of highest and lowest solar energy are called solstices. At two different times of the year, however, the Earth's tilt is perfectly perpendicular to the sun's radiation. It is neither close nor further away from the sun. This causes the day and night to be more or less of equal length and is called the equinox. The solstice leading equinox therefore do Honorutusa determine the start of the different seasons. On the 20th of March, the fall equinox will take place and you should be able to notice that Litsati Libusi will feel like they're both equally long. The second equinox in September marks the presence of spring. Planetarium the planets and constellations in space. more about the different objects that make up our solar system. We'll take an awesome trip to space to explore all these things. Check it out. My name is Constant Forsky, presenter, Johannesburg Planetarium Wits University. Uh, what we're basically doing is educate learners about astronomy using our star projector here behind me. With the students, everything is in a textbook. So you've got your diagrams in the, in the textbook, which is very, very static. So here inside the planetarium, 
we can move the star projector and everything becomes in motion. So it, it helps in visualization of the concepts of astronomy. With this instrument, basically, we can show people how the stars move across the sky, daily motion. We can show how the sun moves across the year, as well as we can take you to any place on Earth, any time, into the future or to the back. The star projector is totally analog, right? So there's no computers attached to the star projector. So when we look at the star projector, we see it's got two bowls there, top and bottom. And those two bells are basically for our main stars. Around the two bells over there, we can see we've got tiny little projectors and they project our bright stars. In between, when we look carefully, we will see these projectors two, 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 and they will do the sun, the planets, and the moon. So it doesn't matter where you are on Earth, what time it is, we can set up the star projector for that. So at the moment, the star projector is set up for Johannesburg, but if I want to move to Cape Town, it's just very, very simple movement of the star projector. Or I can go to London or to Egypt or any place on the Earth. Over here, we don't need to worry about longitude, right? Because we've got the same stars in South Africa that we will have in Sydney. So what we do is we change in latitude. So, for instance, Johannesburg is at 26 degrees latitude, Cape Town is at 35 degrees. So by just moving a few degrees of our star projector, we will see the change in the stars itself. That will mean that, for instance, the Southern Cross, during a certain time of the year, will be very, very, very low, or sometimes disappearing for us in Johannesburg, but for the guys in Cape Town, it's always visible because they're further south than us. If we go to a place that's at a different latitude, then we just change the settings on the star projector. For instance, the stars from the southern hemisphere is different from that of the northern hemisphere. So when we move from South Africa to maybe London, then we will see the northern star, Polaris, rise, where we don't see that from here in Johannesburg. Same with the guys in London. If they would like to see the Southern Cross, they will need to move south. So once again, we can just move our star projector to be equal to our latitude to see those stars. Wow, wouldn't you guys also love one day to really go up into space, maybe to the moon or even Mars? Even though Abantu Abangani have had the privilege, civilization from all corners of the earth have found meaning in things from outer space. Remember how cultures celebrate the change in seasons and get an inside scoop on one of Mzansi's best young scientists. Thomas. Thomas. Welcome back, it's great to have you guys on along with COMZ on your number one channel, SABC1, Mzansi Fashia. Kachako, we are roaming around in space as we find out more about the biannual event every time the equinoxes. They are Koka March, which is my birthday month, Lika September, Silimuli Silimu, along with the solstices, signify changes in season. We're fortunate enough to get an insight into the different ways in which civilizations celebrate these changes, as well as Tulagabans, how these celestial events have helped to shape the calendar as we know it today. We'll also get a chance to see a real telescope in action. It will really tweet them more about the great technology and science behind it. As born in Guti, Landilani, up next. Remember how cultures celebrate the change in seasons and get an inside scoop on one of Mzansi's best young scientists. The equinox signifies different important events for many cultures and religions who celebrate these occurrences each year in their own unique way. In ancient Greece, fall marked by the vernal equinox was associated with the quest for the goddess Persephone to return to her husband. This was celebrated with rituals for protection and security, as well as reflection on past successes and failures. The Chinese are also prompt to commemorate these astronomical events. The September equinox falls in the middle of the autumn when they celebrate the abundance of harvest from their summer plantations with a traditional dish, etziwang as mooncake, filled with lotus, sesame seeds, a duck egg, or dried fruit. 
Their neighbor Japan celebrates both the March and September equinoxes with Higan, a week of Buddhist services, and has both of these days down as national holidays. Higan is on the other shore and refers to the spirits of the dead reaching Nirvana. Bana ba sebedi sa sibaka sena gore ba gone go tshakela go konomaka le go decorate the graves of those who have passed on. Telescopes are used to observe phenomena far out in space that cannot be seen with the naked eye. So rona re khetse le re tsa merlo bona how one of these amazing machines work in real life. Come along. Eh ntse la ga ke na Hubert Mathebola. Mo ga ke Johannesburg Observatory. Se an observatory ke plege e eh ba tho ba tlang go tlo bona dina lady and all the stuff that is uh, up there in the in the in space. Muchine o ke ona ro be re ke sang go lebela dina lady ka wa. So we call it a telescope. Yeah, it's a 26-inch telescope, meaning that in a lens right in the middle, it has got a lens that is 26-inch in diameter. How we operate this telescope is that it's more parking position now. We park it, you know. So our little Tomo we unlock the brake. So once we reboot the brakes, then we can move the telescope. So reboot it go on the roof. Yeah. The reason why we on the roof is that keep plug air to the outside. So we rotate the telescope in this opening on the roof. So we can So the telescope is move and rotate just like that. Now roof it design way come how it can rotate, so it can rotate 360 degrees. So what you do is you operate on the platform. If you press control and left, you can go left. If you press control and right, you can go right. So you can go all the way 360 degrees, and so in, in other words, you can be able to see sighting on the on the sky. The different parts of the telescope. A, we call it the front shutter. Hello, la copy le hori light its end, and then really this instrument le ona wula. So A reveals a finder scope. So finder scope ki ona we barigi sangu locate the star on the sky. So you cannot look through A A hole A because of how can level la mo you can't see. The, the star in, in, in front of you. So we are using a finder scope so that one eye can look more finder scope and then the other one is going to the object where we are located. It is an eyepiece. Now, when we are eyepiece, you magnify the object. Light is on a copy and it lay on the 26-inch uh, lens. Then the lens converges the light onto the finder scope, and the finder scope is an object. planet, for instance, planet actually Jupiter. But there Jupiter in some dark bands and a great red spot. So those bands and the spot more eyepiece. Plague A it chooses to go to the so it got distance uh, above sea level. It's at 1.87 meters. So that is playing the highest mojo. So Kahori is high. It's a hori oscavali interference light. And then uh, astronomy and uh, observer the stars. In a plague signal is in in a little light and art. So this place is ideal because the height is on the interference of light as such. We only observe at night. We observe at night because the Roman is a lady, the planets, the planets, the planets, the planets, the So we observe at half past seven until 11 at night. And usually we observe at the winter. Because winter usually has a, a, a rainy or cloudy weather. Uh, usually the sky is clear than winter. Njong Abbas is born through the season. There are tons of successful Mzansi scientists who have made a name for themselves in the world. Ihiro Asnayo Namhlanje is an astrophysicist with a string of credentials and many success stories of his own work abroad. Nyaz Gutsun Kulumangoban.
Let's go find out. Yes, I do actually know of one actual physicist that grew up in the township. His name is Little Todi Leo, and I also heard that he went to vet as well. Little Todi Leo ukulele in the Kalahari townships of Bambirstad and Mabatu. After matriculating, he did an undergraduate course at VITS before moving to the USA to study at MIT, one of the most prestigious universities of technology, Liam Klabin. He has a degree in physics, a master's degree in both astronomy and creative writing, as well as a PhD in astrophysics. He spent a few years working in the US at one stage, having a research position with NASA, where he investigated the evolution of our galaxies and their structures. Masaben set different kinds of telescopes from around the world and even some in space. Nam Sanjay, he's a member of UJ's physics department and has a deep interest in inspiring and training Amantabasha Balayam Zantu, who are scientists. He says it's always valuable to keep an open mind, be curious, be fair to everyone around you, and know your stuff inside out. We celebrate this cool astro physicist who keeps Mzansi's name high in the global field. Was we eight dollars to explore the origins and making of our calendar. So look at what the equinox means for South Africans. Let's go. What does the equinox have to do with the calendar and why is it so significant for us? Comes. Comes. What's up, Zanti? You guys are still tuning into TOMZ, the favorite science and technology show, Konala, on your number one channel, SABC One, Zanti for sure. We are on a mission in space to learn more about the equinoxes and solstices, which has everything to do with the tilt and the rotation of the Earth. Sambi Desai one of the coolest places on Earth to get a glimpse of the science that makes it possible for Tina to know what's going on above our heads in space. Shortly, we are going to have our social session, so be sure to let it rip on our social media pages. Check out what we're exploring up next. Join us for a short history of our calendar and how the equinox has affected it. Discover some of the best apps to keep you in the loop with astronomical events. And get inspiring career and life advice from our special guests. So look as I did to Dile earlier on, the culture studying at Damul Fatengaufela have traditions surrounding the equinox. Honajonong Arutle from D, how the earliest notation of the date emerged and helped the calendar to evolve. In 46 BC, Julius Caesar, a Roman statesman, introduced the Julian calendar. Lebe Sebenziswa for hundreds of years all over Rome, Europe, and the Americas. Usisa Usebenzi said the solar year, a measure of how long it takes the sun to reach the exact same place in the sky, as a guide for the calendar, and thus had 365.25 days in one year. But Ngoba Usisa's measure of a year was slightly longer than an actual year. The date of the equinox drifted significantly. Because the occurrence of the the equinox is used to determine the date of Easter. This made matters difficult for those who celebrated. Thus, in 1582, Pope Gregory XIII brought forth the Gregorian calendar, which resorted the date of the equinox to a more standard realm of time, correcting the length of a year by 0.002%. The Gregorian calendar was soon accepted by Catholic communities, and Namklanje is the most widely accepted calendar around the world. That just goes to show how an astronomical event can help us determine time. Some insight into the importance of knowing what's going on in space. Take a look. Astronomy is one of those sciences where you can include all other sciences. So we can do mathematics. We can bring in geography. A lot of people want to know what's the conditions like on Mars. Right. And therefore, astronomy can help with that. Okay, so people want to find out about Mars and what is happening there. Their training as geologists will help them figure out what's going on on the planet of Mars. Right, other mathematics. Astronomy has become a mathematical subject. It is not any more of days that you stare behind telescopes night after night after night. Things are these days worked out by computers and we use the telescopes to gather that kind of information, but all behind it is mathematics. South Africa is it's all, oh, really a, a space agency, which is more similar to the, uh, to the NASA. So once we run a space agency, we, we want scientists South Africa involved in the in those space issues. So space in development of the country because the technology that we is on space they are already uh, roll over into other sectors of our lives 
they're going to improve our lives. So space, it's going to come huge in terms of uh, improve our economy, improve our lives of, of people in, in, in our country. So space is actually the next big thing. It's Catholic Socialize. This is why we call Social Session. My favorite part of the show. Yeah. Where's the Kuluman and it's Tolen Gaban to boot together Gatan in Kalangani about today's topic. Yo, D, who do we have on Facebook? Well, Upumla says loving Tom's once again, always learning new stuff. And Uhenry and Uti, he loves seeing Uti in telescope and Bella in Jani. Liz underscore Thomas, good Twitter and Uti. Thanks, Tom's always finding out about things I've never heard of before. That is what we are here for. Always showing you guys things that are interesting. Asians are alive around us. So, Kelly, okay, spit it on Facebook. I go Facebook, spit it on Mikey and Oti. He loves learning about space. And this episode inspired him to do hmm. so even more. Let me take a guess, Mark. You want to be an astronomer one day? Well, it's an amazing profession, and it's in Agu Tom City, all the best. Stay tuned to see more of the episodes of Nata and inspire you to do even more. Kodamaji, as some insoles are from the pros, good to us, Pitilin. Check this out. Let's go. I encourage Banavaskolo, Isang, Metriki, we're from grade 10. I encourage our religion, Mansi, and science to go to but I just guys are meant lead because with meant lead, I guess for no it's a this engineering courses. There are finally institutions sitting at the moment in South Africa at the moment they do offer uh, degrees in in astronomy. At the moment, Renali, this SKA project, the Square Kilometer Array project, which is a huge project in Halamomuzans, that project it will need a lot of scientists, it will need a lot of astronomers. So there are a lot of opportunities that it create one through that, that project. If you want to know exactly what's going on in the sky above you or would just like to keep up with specific solar events, Sky Predictor for Android is the perfect tool. It will give you all the info you need to have on the sun, moon, weather and even some communication satellites. You'll be able to get the weather forecast, sunset and sunrise times, info on astronomical events like the equinoxes, moon phases and a whole collection of cool features. Whenever you're an Apple user, be sure to get your hands on the free SNT Sky Week app. This interactive app will provide you with custom sky maps situated for your location, allowing you to literally browse the sky above. It will also make sure you are in the know of all major sky events like equinoxes, eclipses, and even meteor showers. So for more info, it's on our website with www.toms.co.za and follow the links. What's up, how you guys are as inspired as we are by learning more about what's up there in space. Impani, before we sign off, let's recap and see what we're going to do with you. We explored the science behind the equinoxes, Raituta Hurhubani Geta Hala Habedi Kasilimo, and Lurdi Chohuri. We visited an amazing place where knowledge of the celestial realms are abundant. We celebrated an amazing astrophysicist from the humble beginnings of a South African township. We found out more about the ways in which other cultures celebrate the coming of autumn and spring. We took a look at the science behind telescopes and saw the incredible things they are capable of. We took a journey in time to find out how the equinoxes have helped to create our calendar. We got some new applications to put information from outer space at your fingertips. And we made sure that you guys are inspired by the input from our guests. So, hello, we got more information. We'll start checking local website in Yaruna on www.toms.co.za. And we will to raise your voice on Twitter and on Facebook. And that's it, Toms fans, from me and Kelly and D to you. We'll see you guys next time on another journey of learning and discovery. Same time, same place. Don't miss it. We'll be back next time on Toms. It will take the science of 3D printing. See a 3D printer in action. It will tell more about the endless possibilities of 3D printing and explore the ways in which this technology can enhance lives. Don't miss Tom's every Monday and Tuesday at 4 p.m. only on SABC One Mzansi for sure.